Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, do a little something a little different. Um, uh, I have I'm a big fan of miniatures games. Um, in the in the context of miniatures games, where each miniature is a character moving around through 3D terrain, um, and uh, you know you're measuring and, and line of sight and all that kind of stuff. I'm not a big fan of the, the, the current trend of miniatures just being thrown into board games just for the sake of them being miniatures where they're really nothing more than tokens or pawns or whatever. They really serve, they serve no purpose. So uh, miniature uh, war games though, tabletop games, can be a lot of fun. And the thing I've struggled with is terrain. Um, uh, terrain comes in various forms. You can 3D print terrain, you can buy terrain. Um, for example, you can get like a, this is from a, a train set, but uh, it's HO scale uh, uh, barn. It's very good, very nicely detailed and everything, but um, you have to you know, invest in this and you have to store this somewhere. I mean, this is a physical object that you have to store. And if you have a lot of different systems you like to play, then you have to store terrain for all these different systems. Um, and that can be quite cumbersome if you've been into a, uh, any game stores you have some, you know, that have uh, that host miniature players, uh, you'll see shelves and shelves of terrain that you can pick from. But you know, it's still got to be somewhere. So I did find on uh, Drive Through RPG some uh, terrain that you could download and print yourself, like this. This was I was using this for Fallout, and there's several of these, and these are great. I mean, you you, you fold them together as as cardboard, as cardstock. They're very thin. The uh, base plates here I mounted onto some chipboard and then and then glued them down so that made them steady so you can just throw this whole terrain piece on the table and move between and they look good and they're all right but still now i've got something else physical 3d that i've got a store that is now more fragile than the plastic pieces would be so that was always frustrating so you know i made uh four of these and they're great you know like i said they work great but you know i have a storm somewhere and that's only four so since I like war games, I did toy with the idea of uh, just doing th uh, 2D terrain. And I did play a game of Fallout Wasteland Warfare using a, uh, a flat um, dry erase board and just drawing the terrain on there and, and, and ignoring height. If you really wanted to do height, you know, in a war game, you'll have implied height with buildings. You only, the only thing is, it's like, like uh, the old game of uh, the first game of Doom on the computer, you could only occupy one vertical position uh, in space. You could not go into a building and then Quake came along and you could go under and over and all this kind of stuff. You could be at different heights. Um, in the same X, Y coordinate, you could be at different Z heights. And so that's you lose that in uh, using two-dimensional terrain, obviously. Uh, and in war games, you have a building and the building, even though you can simulate being in the building in some war games, you you know, it, you can't really move within the building and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of kludgy, but it worked. I enjoyed it. You know, you drew trees and I drew buildings and I drew roads and I drew lakes and, you know, you just worked with it and it just, it worked out fine. I mean, it really did. It was just, you know, you lost some of the imagination. So I keep coming back, keep waffling between. It's like, oh, I want to just do 2D, I want to do 3D, but I want to do that. And so finally, I think I've come up with something that um, I'm introducing today. It's a system for 3D terrain. I call it flat D terrain the flat D terrain system um, and I'm going to share it with you today um, as of the time you're seeing this video it is available for pay what you want on drive through RPG along with a small sampling of terrain um, my goal is to hopefully have some of the designers of uh, these kind of systems who do you know compile into great artwork will alter their design slightly to work with the flat D system and again, you know, they'll, you know, they'll sell theirs, at, you know, for themselves. I won't get any money out of that. There's no royalties, there's no licensing to, to making it part of that. But, you know, with the system, I can create terrain pieces that look like this, right? And even have removable lids, roofs, so you can play inside and out. Um, you can also use it for uh, set pieces, such as uh, crates shipping containers, so on and so forth, that are perfectly sturdy enough. And I'll show you how this works in a little bit, but this is just an example of, of what you can do. But when all's said and done, it's time to put it away. You can store it all 
in a little flat box because it all collapses back down. So as I mentioned in the intro, um, the flat D terrain system is basically comprised of, of two, two major components. The first is these um, terrain clips that I've designed uh, and 3D printed. And these I'm releasing, as I mentioned, to the uh, gaming community uh, free of charge. Um, and you can get these on, uh, as of today, you'll be able to get them on uh, DriveThruRPG. Well, I'm released. It's a set of 21 clips. I'm going to go over those here in a minute to go over what they do and what their purpose is. But then also, it's um, the terrain is made up of, of just cardstock. Anything you can basically print on your home printer or possibly print at a copy shop like Kinko's or uh, uh, some other store. Uh, you want to print on cardstock um, uh, and. Uh, but then it's pretty much whatever a whatever creativity a designer can come up with. We'll just show you some different uh, some different set pieces. Um, you can see one here. This is a building I've created. Um, this is another building. This is a two-story. I've designed these pretty much for uh, the 28 millimeter scale. We've got some some figures here. So you can kind of get an idea of what they are. And this is just created from uh, uh, cardstock I printed at home and the clips um, as you see here are what hold it together and work um, with the system but then when you're done everything collapses down and you can store it in a box store it flat as much as you need um, and I'm really hoping that the clip system uh, inspires other uh, designers who already make some excellent, excellent um, uh, printable terrain to adopt their models slightly so that they can be used with the system. Um, and then the, you know, your creativity knows no bounds. And there'll be times you're going to want to, uh, you know, keep adding your own uh, terrain pieces, perhaps trees, crates, things like that. But if it's all in the same general scale, then it all works together so but for, for the sake of the large set pieces the buildings and things like that uh, I think this works so let's just go over some of the clips here and you'll see some of the terrain as we go so again the, tr the clip 3d models are being made available and being released um, along with instructions on how you can order them printed um, uh, through third parties um, I'm not making any anything I'm printing these I'm not printing these for anybody um, um, the, and then it'll be, there'll be some sample, uh, terrain that's available as well when you download this. And I will be designing and releasing terrain, uh, of various types, the various sets. Um, and I'm hoping that other people will too, to target the flat D terrain system. So the first, the, 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 the workhorse, I think of the whole system here is the 90 degree uh, piece. You can see that right here. There you go. And that is designed uh, primarily to hold corners, obviously a 90 degree corner. You can see right here, there's a 90 degree right there holding the corner together. And there's one on all four corners. On small buildings, you probably only need four of these to hold uh, a, a building together. Um, on this larger building, I've got 
four across the top as well since it's a taller piece. For example, I've got this Jack's Garage model here that I've made. You're basically going to take the 90 degree clip, you're going to fold it, and all the models uh, that I've made, like, so this prints as one sheet of cardstock, and then you're going to score it, you're going to fold it together and make it into this two-sided piece. Now this smaller building has an inside and an outside, all right, so you can see here the detail of the, uh, the boarded up window, the former glass that's around it. And then when you're on the inside, you can see the boards going across where the window would be. So, so to assemble it, you just take the corner clip and you pop it into place. And it's, the, the clips are designed for a two, two thickness, two ply thickness of cardstock. And that is pretty, pretty sturdy especially at 110 pound. So I basically just get white cardstock and print onto that and then fold it and now it's two ply. And I think one thing, you know, it's gonna probably be easier to see here on a straight piece. There's a channel that the, uh, the terrain piece will flow into. And so it holds it in there and then it's angled to guide it into that position. So as we go over the other pieces, you'll see it. But with the, um, and I keep all mine here in a Plano box, a couple of different Plano boxes. And I've printed various prototypes over the years as I've been designing this. So take the other side here. And again, we've got the keep closed is written on the garage door on the inside and on the outside it's normal and pop the corner on okay and then you're going to take those two pieces so slide one there slide the other piece into the corner and last but not least the opposite corner At that point, you got your building, and it's all set and ready to go. Except for it needs a roof, if you want to play with a roof. And you probably don't want it sitting on you know, grass terrain. So with this particular model, I have, I have created um, floor pieces. And so this is a wooden for a cabin, and this is the opposite side when you make it. So it's, it's thick and sturdy. And then this is a concrete garage floor. And so you would be able to set that on top of this. So what I like to use is you can use poster tack, the blue stuff that you use to hang posters, or um, Gorilla Mounting Putty works just the same. And you can see I got a piece right here. I think this may dry out a little less uh, than, uh, than the uh, blue stuff will. So this is now available in most stores. I got this at uh, Home Depot. I think you can get it at Walmart. Amazon carries it. Um, so then all you got to do is take your uh, terrain piece and just put a little dot of the putty on there if you don't want them to move around. And when you're done, you just press it onto your set piece in the corners. That helps keep everything lined up, but also attaches it to your floor. And then you've got your building that you can move around on your terrain if you want to, wherever you want it. And you can have this pre-made if you like. So we have a T intersection. So this can serve, we'll pull up the cabin. And again, I've got a cabin with an indoor inside and outside. So what you'd see from the inside versus what you'd see from the outside. And so with a T piece, it's, it's got the 90 degree, but it's got the 90 degree, but it's also got another piece coming off of it. So you can use this to, for example, hold your corner together. But then you've got this offshoot that can be used to hold, for example, a fence. If you want to touch a fence to the side of your house. You slide that in there. And now, you know, depending on this is a long fence, that you could bend it, score it, do whatever you want to it. 
and now you've got you know a fence going off your cabin. So that's the T. You can also, if you wanted to, if you wanted the fence to come off the side, then the fence, you could do regular corners on the corner and then attach it somewhere in the middle and have your fence coming off of that. Okay. So that's the T. Then there's also a 180 which is just a straight connector, but this is actually when you want to connect. So let's say I've got two long runs that I want to do. So I've got, let's say, two fence pieces I want to connect. Then you just connect this on so it's in the center. So it's kind of like that. And then you can put your other piece on there. And it kind of joins them, joins them together into one long run. And then you would want to, this doesn't stand by itself, so you would want to put a stand perhaps on this, attach it, you know, something else to give it some support. Uh, either put it onto a T, attach it to a building, or um, we've got another piece coming up that's a stand. You could use another one of these if you wanted to. Uh, the straight runs, you're not connecting. But uh, that's what these, uh, we've got small stands and large stands. You see here they are, um, they only have one set of prongs and uh, you know supports on the sides so those are meant to mainly go onto a single piece to give it support so you can stand it and it's got a circle there which gives it a little more uh, area to put some putty on if you want to stick it you know onto your uh, onto your uh, game board on your mat or wherever you wanted to you know position that but it gives a little more stability so like a foot would be so if you wanted to, let's say, I'm getting ahead of myself here with a stand. I was gonna try to do them in order, but needs must. So let's say, so I've got this little barricade here and you can just attach the stand to that. And then it would pretty much just stand up and then your character can be behind it. So it gives a little more footing. So it's a little more stable, okay. So I got ahead of myself. That was the, the large stand. There's also a smaller stand, uh, just a smaller version of that that does the same thing, but it's more designed for clipping onto uh, uh, some wraparound, some set pieces. Um, for example, these crates, okay? Um, how these are designed, are they flatten like this? And then when you fold them together, you've got these little thin pieces that are gonna tuck into the side piece of the crate. Like that. I'll put the small stand on that. And that aligns it. And you can do the other side. Straighten them up a little bit. And then you've got a small stack of crates that again can be in the field to play. Your character can hide behind it. They're sturdy enough the character can stand on them if you need to. And again, you can always put some mounting putty on there and hold it in place. So that is the small stand. So in addition to the T, getting back on track here, you got the we've got a long uh, straightaway for if you want to give more support. To a, uh, to a connector, and I probably would have used that on this from before. I probably would have used that here to give more stability. And basically, the fins just go further out and give it more of a rigidity. Like that. So, we've got the 180, the 180 long. Also, have an intersection, and again, you can use your imagination is how this would be used but you could connect if you wanted to connect two corners you got a corner here and a corner here or you could attach a fence coming off of each side or if you were doing something like a uh, inside that inside a building or something and you want to have um, walls you know, where they crisscross you could do that so 
that's there, that's the intersection. There is a 90 uh, degree short. You see it's got a little bit smaller reach. And I would use this more for if you have a small corner, like a, you have a door right in a corner that you've cut out like an archway and you just need to have that grip on the corner, but you still want to, uh... so if you're doing a, uh, like a castle, basement, wine cellar, something like that, and you got the fold, let's see, you've got that door in the way, that opening. So this one allows you to put it on there and still hold some of the fabric. I mean, this one's been used a lot. And the good thing about this is, if this terrain wears out, you just print new ones. So that's the 90 degree short, we've done the intersection. So then in addition to the 90 degrees, um, there's there's the, the siblings to that are the 30 degree, the 45 degree, and the 60 degree. Same premise, um, again with a, with a 60 degree, you can put six of these together and make a hex, hexagonal building. With the 45 degree, you can make an octagonal building. I've used eight of those. And with the 30 degree, you could use 12 of those and make a 12 sided building or any combination thereof. Like you could have a, you could have a, uh, a room that perhaps, you know, just had a hexagonal, you know, three sides hexagonal, but you know, would be 30, you know, 60 degree angles. So now we go to the clips. The rest of these are clips and they're special purpose clips. Uh, and I'll show those here to you here real quick. So the first one I want to show you is for a roof piece. So what the roof pieces are for is they will go onto your side walls. And you probably just need two on a side depending on how big they are. And you see how they've got this little channel here. And I think on the new design this piece is no longer here. These are, these are older prototypes, but this, this flap here is no longer necessary. And so you put those on there. And then you can take your roof piece. And in this case, we'll use the, uh, there we go. We've got these 10 roof pieces and they're designed to be the right size for this. And then you can just lay that on there going across the top. Another one here. And another one here. And you lay it across the top. And so at that point, now you have, you know, the building with a roof on it. And it's sturdy enough that as long as it, the slope is right, the guys can be on it if you want them to be. Or if you want to play indoor outdoor, they come up here. We've opened the garage door. Well, now they can be inside the building, moving around, going out that door, so on and so forth. So, gives you some options for removable roofs. And that's what the roof piece is for. There's another way to do a roof, I'll show you in a minute. And that's just a folded roof that just folds down and just lays on top of the peaks and it's still removable but it's uh, gravity is just keeping it in place so um, it's like this and then you'd fold it and it's two-sided this is a thatched roof for a old stone building and so then this just sits on top and it just you know it's on fits on the roof and if you want to take it off you take it off if you don't you don't Okay, so now we've got here, this is a small, uh, kind of a science fiction-y themed, uh, small trailer, you know, construction trailer kind of building. I've already put that together. So the next one is a, is, is the floor clip. There's two different varieties of the floor clip. There's this one, which is the short, and then there's the standard floor clip, which is this size. And how these work is you just clip them on here, side walls again. And it, do, it all depends on, on the, you know, how the, the unit was designed. 
by the designer of the building. And you clip them on in place. And for a small building like this, you probably only need you probably only need four for a smaller building. And then you take your and then you take your floor piece and you can drop it in play. Now this will hold its shape better, obviously, if you've got the uh, sticky on there and holding the right angles at right angles. But the net result is you have this floor held up and your units can move on the floor. And if you need to remove it, you can always pull it out and have the units inside the building if you want or bring them out and just keep it closed up. Now these are made, uh, these are again folded over cardstock, but again I've, I've put some uh, popsicle sticks in the middle and glued that together to make it rigid so it'll hold. And one side is a rusted roof and the other side is a clean roof. So this one drops down a little more, gives you a little more lip. Um, that's how this uh, building here was done that you saw. It. That's how this building was done. Same thing, I've got uh, the, the uh, roof tile is built this way, but I have just clips. I have uh, eight clips going around the perimeter of the roof, and then this is built with some larger tongue depressor type sticks to give it rigidity, and then you can move your characters. Then you can move your characters all across the roof. The two-story buildings I do not make. I did not make them particularly with an inside and outside because it'd be harder to have floors inside the model. Uh, so these would mostly be just set pieces that you're either on or outside. Um, and in the case of this building, its sibling is this building. So you can actually build the other side of this panel is this panel. So you can build either one or both. Print two sets and you can build both buildings. And the shorter floor clip would normally be used on this kind of building here where you want the, uh, it's more of a, a large container and not really a, an inset roof. So that's how the short floor clip works, as you see. Whereas the regular floor clip sits, the, the, the flooring area here is deeper down. This one is, as the name suggests, shorter. So this would go on. And then the uh, roof wouldn't sit as far down. Those are the floor clips. And then we have another one here. Uh, it's the platform. And this is similar to a floor clip, except if this were designed accordingly, like if you wanted to have a walkway, then you would put a pair of these on the um, edge. And then You could you could place it. These are these are designed for 30 millimeters, so I don't have anything. I haven't designed any walkways yet, but you would be able to put a walkway across it. So then your character would be able to run across the catwalk. And you may or may not need to add uh, something to hold it. Like if the walkway were over here, you might want to put a clip to hold it as well, or as many of these as possible as necessary to hold that. So that is the platform clip. We've discussed the roof. Um, the last of these are basically just for accessories. Um, and I don't think you would need as many of these to be generated. The first one here, we'll call this the vertical. So this would clip to one side and would allow you to clip something else. Uh, let's see if we find something. For example, a ladder. If you, want to, if you want to have a ladder going up the building or a rope and you want to add that to indicate somebody could climb, so then you could just clip it on there. So that's the vertical, which goes straight up and down. And then there's also a 
30 degree. All right, which one is clipped on allows a 30 degree incline. A 45 degree, which again, cocks at a 45 degree. Now in most cases, these would clip to a floor and go down like a ramp, but you could clip them down low and have them curve up to hold something in place. There's a 60 for a steeper ramp or ladder. And then there's a true 90. And I envision the 90 here to be, for example, if I can get to a roof. Let's say, for example, this was here. This was here. And that was our, that was our roof to this building, for example. Then what we could do is we would clip the um, 90 onto the roof, right? And then you could clip a fence, guardrail, to that. And then your character would be on the roof or on the patio. So you could even have another building sitting on top of this and then, you know, deck, patio, whatever, attached to that. So it allows for that. So it's clip 90, and then finally there is the clip 180. And this is mainly gonna be used to stabilize if, if you wanted to make this a two-story building of the same type, then you could take For example, another piece, fold, an, fold another building, um, same as you did with the first one, but then you could take that and stack them on top of each other, and then that would hold those in position. So then you have two-story, three-story, whatever, however you wanted to do it. And then you could really build floors in here if you wanted to, because you could have this, you could have the floor clip in place, and you could have this. So I think I've covered everything that is uh, uh, available with the uh, with the 21 clips. Um, again, you can order these through Shapeways. Um, the full instructions as to what you're allowed to do with them um, is in the is in the documentation that comes with it. I would love to see designers, obviously, putting together um, better you know better terrain than this. Um, to use with the clip system. But the, the thing I found for me uh, that, that works great is the fact that it's um, so, it doesn't take up any storage space. This will all break down into a very flat system. Take all the clips off. And you see that this building is brick on one side, stone on the other. So when you when you get this piece, you'll print it on one sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper, and then you'll score it, fold it, glue it together, and then you've got your piece. And then you just choose which side you want to use. If you really wanted to be crazy, you could have part stone and part Brick. That would look right. Um, but it all just breaks apart. The clips go back into your system. The roof had already fallen. Clips go away. You've got four walls. Collapse down to that. One roof tile. And then a flooring tile, I did this for sidewalk, and there's also a uh, plaza, what I call a plaza, which is kind of a stone. Uh, and then this is included with this building. This is not part of the free set, this would be an add-on. But uh, 
but uh, the same general concept does work. So you got this and you got this and it all just collapses, the whole building collapses into this and it's versatile because you can use either side you want. Uh, one thing I did add to this is a non-marked uh, building. So all, everything's the same. It just doesn't say Jensen Building or 0609. And on the opposite side, it doesn't have a street number. Because um, if you want to add multiples of these, you could. So, but you'll see that on, they'll all be linked under um, Flat D Terrain on Drive Through RPG. And uh, again, the clips, 100% free. Uh, you cannot redistribute them. You must point them to the uh, drive through RPG site or to flatdterrain.com and the link will be in the uh, notes on this video. Um, but I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this to be something that uh, you can use. Um, uh, and hopefully we'll see a lot more designs using the Flat D Terrain system. So thank you again for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!